Brett Premack here. I'm speaking with one of the winners of the Sonny Rollins Meets His Fans Global Hangout Contest that took place on Sonny's official Facebook page. Uh, a number of Sonny Rollins fans and listener supporters uh, sent in video, and the lovely and talented Lauren Collins is joining us right now. She's one of the 10 winners. Good afternoon, good evening. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I must ask you, you are, I believe, 18 years old? 17, actually. 17, excuse me. Where the, how did you develop the interest in jazz and why the saxophone? When I started high school, I started as a flute player in the concert band. And uh, I realized about halfway through the year that there was a jazz program as well. So I talked to the teacher about switching in. And when I was talking to her, she asked which instrument I would like to play besides the flute. And I had been listening to things like the Dave Brubeck Quartet or um, the Dave Brubeck Group and stuff as a kid. So I decided to try out the tenor saxophone instead of the alto because I wanted something a bit bigger than the alto saxophone. So, so the uh, Dave Brubeck recordings that they, that you heard, was that on the radio or in your household or at school? My parents used to play uh, Dave Brubeck a lot. Ah, yeah. that's interesting. And uh, as you started to play the saxophone, who were the saxophone players that you listened to? The first record I actually got was Sonny Rollins' uh, Saxophone Colossus which is the first record my saxophone teacher gave me uh, to start listening to a saxophone player. The first jazz record I ever got was Miles Davis' Kind of Blue. So after uh, listening to Saxophone Colossus hundreds of times and deciding that I really wanted to pursue learning and performing in this music, I started listening to Dexter Gordon and... Yeah, a lot of other saxophone players. I don't think I can list all of them. But So now you're 17. Are you a senior in high school? I have uh, one more year left. I'm in my second to last year of high school in Canada. And uh, do you play in uh, ensembles? Do you perform locally? Yeah. I, um, I was in my city's all-star jazz band this year as uh, lead tenor. And I perform with both of the senior jazz bands at my school, as well as several instrumental combos. And do you th do you look forward to a career in music? I'm I'm planning on a career in music. Yes, um, whether or not that will unfold, I don't know. But it's definitely something I have my heart set on. And ideally, if you were going to go for further study, where do you think you'd like to go to school? Um. I was thinking of applying to Humber College in Toronto, I believe, Toronto, Canada. Um, I actually got an email from a jazz camp off that was offering me acceptance that takes place at the college during the summer. I was also thinking of applying to uh, McGill in Montreal for their jazz program and Berkeley. Well, that's, that's an ambitious... Uh... Uh, a group of schools there. Uh, I yeah. know that uh, for a couple of my friends are teaching uh, in Winnipeg. Do you know about the jazz program there? I forget. I know that uh, Derek Gardner is there and John Gordon. Do you know that program? No, I, I've, I've heard of uh, vocal jazz programs in Winnipeg, but I haven't heard a lot of instrumental jazz programs there. Yeah, there's some great programs. So have you ever seen Sonny Rollins live? No, I haven't. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Uh, besides Saxophone Colossus, which of his recordings do you like to listen to? My absolute favorite is The Bridge. It's, it's my go-to jazz album all the time. I love the uh, selection of songs on the album. There's excellent contrast. And just the improvisation on the album, the musicality, it just it all fits perfectly. Yeah. And I must ask you, as a 17-year-old woman, who plays this music, who has a certain amount of respect for, for people like Sonny Rollins. Your contemporaries, other 17-year-olds, 
How do they feel about jazz? How do they feel about you playing the tenor? Um, most of my friends are also award-winning musicians in the programs that they have participated in. And they all have equal or, like equal amounts of respect for jazz artists that, that I do, and they all work as hard, sometimes even harder than I do at, at um, really making this music special and keeping it alive. Um, I'm the only, one of the only people in the program who actually went for the tenor. A lot of kids went for the alto sax or barry sax or a lot of brass instruments. But there are about three or four tenor players at my high school. That's very good to hear. That's, that's, that's very good for the future of this music, certainly, that uh, it reaches out to young people like you. What is the question that you want to ask Sonny Rollins? Why don't you give us a preview? I've always been curious as to um, Sonny Rollins' employment of the pianoless trio of just bass, drums, and saxophone with no chords. And I've always wondered if that changed the way he improvised around the music or um, other musical aspects of, of playing jazz, because a lot of the combos I work in have a full rhythm section, sometimes with guitar and piano. There's a lot of chords going on. And I've always been curious how, from a professional perspective, that um, chords or no chords can change how this music is played. Great. Well, since you uh, cite the bridge as one of your favorite recordings, I think your your question kind of kind of works there. So, if uh, people wanted to know more about you, Lauren, do you have a Facebook page, a Twitter feed? What's going on for you on social media? I do have a Twitter feed at this moment. I'm not very active on social media. I'm still kind of getting used to it. It's not something that comes natural to me. Um, I can give up my Twitter handle if that's what you're looking for. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Give it up. <laughs> my Twitter handle is L Collins underscore music with uh, L and the L and the C capitalized and the rest lowercase. Okay. Well, you may get some new followers as, as a result of this uh, this preview of our Sonny Rollins meets his fans Google Hangout. Monday, May 5th at noon Eastern Time. The lovely and talented Lauren Collins will be one of the people who's going to say a few words with Sonny, spend a few minutes with Sonny Rollins. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.